Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and for this episode of Tank of the Week, Tank of the Week, episode 22, well, it got bad news, <laughs> and some good news. I'm gonna keep trying to shoot uh, this particular tank, so we're doing the Zebra Auto Singlist, let's get this out of the way. I have been trying to get B-roll of this tank with this, the autos not being reclusive and just kind of zipping around for two and a half weeks uh, I sat with my camera now I, like I left the room I sat with my camera on for uh, like basically had a full battery and let it sit in here for an hour and a half which is the warm room it's about as long as it can go with how I shoot without powering completely down and forgetting whatever it was recording but uh, they they didn't move an inch they <laughs> you know, I had food in there they didn't come out nothing like they know. But I did, I did get one shot of this guy on the glass on specting, and it's, it's going to be handheld, so it'll be a little shaky. So let's talk about this fish, why it's neat, uh, and, and why this fish that I never really see very often, that is a, you know, a grazer of microorganisms and some levels of dust algae, like your, more your diatome algae, uh, why I keep this thing and why I like it. So here you can see this one guy decided to plop up on the glass and quite literally as I, as this shot gets near its end, he zipped off because he finally realized I was like hunkered off to the side shooting him. But you can see that pattern. That pattern on the tail is why we call these guys the Zebra Auto Singlist. And they're very cool. They're also about twice the size, maybe one and a half times the size of a normal Auto Singlist. Um, so like... The females are about 50% larger than a regular full adult auto singlist, and the, the males are, again, about 50% larger than the males in a regular auto singlist, your, your common auto singlist. So they're a little bigger bodied, but man, they're so reclusive. Like my normal autos, I see them out and about all the time, just plopped on leaves or grazing around, and they don't care. These guys hide constantly. And I'll put like zucchini or cucumber in there, and the snails will just like roll over and be all on that stuff. And that was like, nah, I don't trust you yet. That, that human thing put it in here. Like, you buggers. <laughs> and I don't, I haven't, I've been trying to get them to spawn. And I've, I've tried a couple different approaches. I've tried like really frequent water changes, like literally every three days, doing a 50% water change. Um, I've tried letting it get a little bit more mulmy at the bottom so that there's some, you know, random stuff for them to feed on and they can, the babies can just sift through all this constant source of food. I've tried constantly having food sources in the tank. Uh, the only thing I haven't tried that is on order now is having Bacter AE. So there's lots and lots and lots of biofilm available uh, using a supplement to create biofilm. But needless to say, I have tried... <laughs> all sorts of methods to get these fish to spawn and uh my, my thought is maybe i need to find a way to create artificial flow like they need to be in something like a 20 long with uh a matten filter or some kind of hang on the back that's on the side that pushes like streams so it's you know left to right water flow to create some kind of stream uh atmosphere and i i, I mean i'm not even sitting in front of the tank because it's dark now i've given up on trying to film these dang things and um, I'll try, like, I'll try so you can see the tank, but it's basically just, like, a ton of floating plants, a sponge filter, a piece of wood for them to hide, because if they didn't have one, they freak out. I found that out very fast. Uh, and, you know, there's some, like, Anubius that's not doing so hot because it's not getting a lot of light, so I've, I've since moved it, and, um, yeah, it's, it's been a war for me trying to get these fish both to spawn and then also to film them reasonably except that one guy with that like, shaky handheld footage that I got but that, that one fish like you get to see the pattern he's just chilling there and you can see why people like this fish the people who have these things even though they're super reclusive and very shy they're so cool when you get to see them it's kind of like that rare pleco where you're like oh man if you look if you look through the, the wood right over there between all those plants on the underside of that rock, you can see half the pleco. Oh, that made my month. You know, <laughs> like those super reclusive plecos that you never see. And there are there are some of those out there. And then there, I'm sure somebody's gonna be like, 
I own all sorts of Funkos. I see them all the time. Well, aren't you lucky? <laughs> I've had I've had some friends that have had some Funkos where they're like, they have to get in the weirdest angles to see like their leopard frogs or something like that. <laughs> and then they're just like, oh man, he, he hasn't figured out that this little spot's where I can see him. Like my, um, my yellow king tigers, the L333s. I don't know this is a tangent has nothing to do with this tank of the week, but it's episode 22, baby. It's 2020. Who cares? <laughs> anyway, if like he had this, he had this pit that he loved, and he didn't realize that he was completely against the side glass, and I could see him, but he had like rock above him and rock to his side, and this like pit into the gravel, and he's sitting there like, ah, I found my cave. I'm safe. Nobody can find me. I'm just gonna wait. One of these days, a lady pleco is gonna come by. It's like I don't own a lady pleco for you, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I could see him as I got good pictures of him. But he thought he was completely hidden. These guys, on the other hand, these jerks, they they know. They know when I could see him, and they are just out. You know? It's just like, nope. <laughs> I laugh at it now because it's like, when I got these fish from a, a friend inside the club who was tearing his tank down and changing his fish around, he does that like every six months. And he gets all these like crazy rare things too. And it's just, if it's your jam... He's like the best guy to just wait for him to be like, changing my tank up. I need to rehome X, Y, Z. And like, oh, really? <laughs> like, he has like, he had all these other like rare hill stream loaches that aren't like the standard reticulated hill stream loach. And he's like, oh yeah, it took me like a year and a half to source these. I'm like, and you kept them for how long? Yeah, like six months. I decided I wanted to change my tank up and I'm not going to have the right flow anymore. So I won't be able to keep them the way I want to keep them anymore. I'm just like, <laughs> but he keeps like one tank so he keeps one tank and he plays with it and he, when he gets it settled for a while he enjoys it for like six months and then changes it up and <laughs> that's how he does his hobby so anyway I got these fish I was really excited I was like I wanted to breed them Dean uh, Master Breeder Dean had like just recently got his black auto synchless to spawn and I'd had that uh, conversation with him about like how to spawn auto synchless and I know people are going to be like the audio on that thing sucks make another one i'm trying man we have we have busy schedules but um you know it's it was something i randomly recorded because we were just talking until he realized like later on i was recording the conversation because it was super helpful advice uh and I, i've tried some of it and again i'll i'll get back to making like baby brine shrimp because that was one of the keys that he had seen and i tried for a little while baby brine and I didn't see very much, so I'm going to go back to it now that they haven't had it in a while and see if they're more comfortable now, just because they've, they've got that secluded space that they live in, if having that little bit of brine in there, that, that small protein will trigger them to spawn. If not, maybe I'll get all of them rounded up and I'll get them to Master Breeder Dean if he's got space and see if he can get them to spawn. It would be cool if he could, because I would love to have like 30 or 40 zebra autos in a tank as a set of common auto singlets. You know, or something like that. A big, big tank, right? Um, so, that's it. And, like, if I had extra footage, I looped it in here so you could see it. Just to see the tank. And hopefully you might have seen another auto single instead of that one shaky hand cam on the glass. But, uh, <laughs> they're basically just a fish I keep out of hope. <laughs> I just hope something goes right with them. Um, you know, I've, I've lost, I lost a couple when I transitioned them over. They really are fragile when it comes to moves. Or at least they seem to be. Uh, the, the guy who had him at first had mentioned to me that he lost a few when he did his first move. So I'm going to guess that, you know, that's just the nature of the game. But uh, as we get further and further along this, we'll just see. We're getting toward the end of Tank of the Week. Um, I've really had a blast doing all of these for you folks. And just, it, it's it's enjoyable, like going through all of my tanks and like the kind of the challenge of making this extra content for you guys. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, well, what we're doing now in 2020. Um, I've been, I've been really surprised at the results and we'll talk about this, uh, this upcoming Saturday. So the next video will be, um, where we talk about what is going to happen in 2020, the results of the poll that I had and, uh, kind of polling you guys again is to see what you want going forward so with all that being said um if, if for some reason you enjoyed this rant about how it was impossible for me to capture footage of my zebra autosynclist except this one guy 
throw me a little like button. Maybe you understand like the frustration of trying to capture a fish and it just not cooperating with you at all for like a picture or a video. Or you're trying to explain to his friend like, no, 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 this fish is always in this spot. Just come over here for a second. I'll put food in. They'll be over there. And then they never show up. And it's like one thing you want to show your friend that's really cool. Just, it just is like, I know what you're trying to do, human. Nah. <laughs> Uh, if you are my serial disliker, the truest of my fans, the one who knows how terrible all this stuff really is, this clearly proved your point. So you hit that thumbs down twice, buddy. Thank you. Glad you got that done. All right. <laughs> uh, now, for those of you who are new, you may be looking forward to some of the new stuff. we got a couple episodes of Tank of the Week left. Uh, next week, we're going to check out Bob and see what is going on in this angelfish tank right now here bam uh there's some there's been some stuff and it is i think it'll be really interesting to you guys because it's it's weird <laughs> it's it's the only way i can describe it it's weird uh and then we'll have the final episode 24 will be our final episode of tank of the week and uh at the time of filming this that the star of that show is here. And, uh... I'm gonna need something huge. As always, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Maybe subscribe and hit the little bell. And stay awesome.